Hey, hello friends and welcome to this new Flutter video. In this, we're gonna be taking a look at creating animated navigations or animated route transitions in Flutter. So we're gonna be creating something like this, like when you we have a single button in the screen, just for demonstration purposes, of course, and when we click on this button, we're presented with a new screen with nice pop-up animation. So the duration for this animation is quite long, just for demonstration, because you, in real-time apps, you don't really need to have this long animations just for transition. So I hope you get the idea. So let's get started. Okay, so right now we're in a quite simple Flutter app that has just two screens, the first screen and the second screen. The first screen has a simple material button at its center. When we click on that button, we're taken to the second screen. And when we click on that back button, we're taken to the first screen where we started from. So um, right now there is quite a simple transition because uh, this is the transition that is given to you by this material page route. So when we click on that button, the uh, the other, the second screen comes from below and changes in opacity from zero to one. So this is quite a simple transition and it is given to you by this material page route. Okay, so let us take a look at the route hierarchy in Flutter. Okay, so route is a base class for all routes in Flutter. So we have this overlay route and transition route and modal route. So the two routes, uh, route descendants that we're interested in are the page route and pop-up route. So we're in this tutorial, we're gonna be dealing with the page route itself and the pop-up route implementation is uh, quite simple and we're going to be uh, learning about that in a future tutorial. So the page route itself has three more de descendants. That is the Cupertino page route, the material page route, and the page route builder. So the behavior in the previous app that I showed you, where the screen comes from below and changes in opacity, that is given to you by the material page route that itself has its own implementation. So the Cupertino page route, on the other hand, gives you with same kind of stuff uh, just for the iOS operating system. And uh, there is a third kind of page route, descendant of the page route, that is the page route builder. So this class will help us in uh, uh, creating our own transitions in Flutter. Uh, we, can scale, uh, we can scale up the second screen from the first screen. We can rotate the screens and much more. So let's have a look at it. Okay, so back in the app, we're gonna take a look at that page route builder. So we're going to replace this material page route with a page route builder. So this page route builder is going to take three arguments. So the first argument is going to be a page builder, which takes a function that is having three arguments, which are the context, the animation, and the second animation. So uh, in the function body, we're going to return the second screen because this is the child widget that is going to be returned by the page route builder. So the second argument with the page route builder requires is the transition duration. So the transition duration is going to be the duration which your animation is going to take. So in this case, we're just gonna pass in the duration that is in seconds and that is going to be two seconds. So two seconds is just for demonstration purposes and you're going to uh, use much less duration for your real time apps. So the third argument that uh, this page route builder is going to require, that is the transition builder. So this is where the real magic happens. So the transition builder also requires three arguments that are going to be the same, which are in the page builder. So I'm just going to copy those three arguments here and uh, we're going to get a body. So in the transition builder, there's one more argument that is the widget which is going to be the actual widget that is going to be returned by the page route builder. So let, let us name this child. So this widget child is going to be the same widget that is being returned by this page builder. So the second screen is going to be passed in to this transition builder as the child. Okay, so in this transition builder, we're going to return an animated widget. Uh, in this case, we're gonna be using a simple scale transition, which is a type of animated widget, predefined type of animated widget. So uh, in this, we're gonna be returning a scale transition. So in the scale transition requires a simple scale. So the scale is going to be of type animation. So we're gonna be using this animation that we're getting the, in this function here. So we're just gonna simply pass animation. So other than the animation, the scale transition also requires a child. So for this child, we're going to be animating this second screen. So uh, this second screen is being passed to this transition builder as a child. So we're gonna be returning a child here. 
So this is the same child that is uh, that uh, we're getting in this function here. Okay, so the third property that this scale transition requires is the alignment. So for the alignment, we're going to keep that at the center. So we're going to pass simply the alignment dot center. So at this point, we only need a semicolon here. And uh, let me just reformat the code. Okay, so at this point, what I need to do is I need to close the app and run it again. And let me just pull up the emulator. Okay, so the app is running. Let me just minimize the debugger and bring up the app. So at this point, when I click on the second button, you can see that the animation is looking quite weird, but uh, we're using the scale property right. We're using the simple scale transition. So how do we get that bouncy effect here? So for that, what we need to do is we need to go back to the code. We need to uh, move up at the scale transition and before we pass in the animation to the scale transition we have the access to that animation here okay so what we're going to do here is I'm going to take animation I'm going to update it I'm going to use a curved animation and uh, the curved animation requires a parent that is going to be the same animation object and a curves that is going to be uh, curves dot uh, elastic in and out elastic in and out. So um, you, you can pass any type of curve that you want for your animation, uh, the scale animation. Uh, but uh, in this case, we're going to use a simple elastic in and out, like I showed you in the previous demonstration. So basically what is happening is we're taking the animation from this transition builder, we're passing that animation to the curved animation uh, as a parent, and it's going to apply the elastic in and out curve to this and it's going to return the animation to this animation object. So basically we're updating the animation. So we're passing this updated animation to the scale transition. So at this point, when I run the app again, let me go back to the app, and when I click on this button, you can see that the animation is looking quite nice. And I have changed the duration to two, uh, from two to one, so let me take back this to two. And when I run the app again and go back to the app, so you can see that there is a nice bouncy effect to the app. Okay, so you can see that we have implemented this uh, nice looking bouncy effect for our page transition, but the code is looking quite bulky. So what we need to do is we need to actually move this code to a new file that is going to be for just this transition. Let me just cut this page route builder. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm just going to create a new file here, a new dark file. I'm going to name this bouncy page route and uh, in this we're going to create a new class that is the bouncy page route that extends the page route builder okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a constructor that is going to be a bouncy page route and this is going to take in a widget that is going to be uh, this dot widget that uh, that will be the uh, second screen that we're going to make the transition to. So this is going to be of type widget. That is going to be final widget and widget. So what we need to do is we need to call a super function and we need to pass all of the uh, thing that we wrote in the previous class. So I'm just going to remove this page route builder here and uh, this bracket here. So okay, so this is fine and we need to pass in a semicolon. So instead of this second screen, we're going to pass in the widget. Okay, so let me just reformat the code. So basically what we're doing is we have moved that whole transition code to this new class that is called bouncy page route, which extends the page route builder. So that's why we're calling the super function to pass all the properties to the actual page route builder. So in the bouncy page route, we have a constructor that is taking the widget uh, to which the transition is going to take place two. So we're passing this widget to the page builder like we're doing with uh, that with the second screen. So let me just go to the main dot dart file. So instead of that page route builder, what we're going to do is we're going to use this bouncy B O U and see by bouncy page route. And to this bouncy page route, we're going to pass in the widget that is going to be that second screen. So let me just uh, rerun the app. And when I come back to the emulator, you can see when I click on the app, the bouncy effect comes back and we can close and go back to the previous activity. Okay, so I hope you learned much in this tutorial. And if you like the tutorial, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. Your support means a lot. 
Uh, so thank you for watching. See you next time. Peace.